car one night and they, oh, okay, oh good, I don't have to finish that joke then. So what I, what I am going to do is I'm going to tell you the story of a high technology idea based on some nice science and how it goes along the, the long road and turns into an established company. And, it, and I love this story because it's exciting and I told you some of my, my passions for, for the early stage. But also, I, this is me, I'm, a, I'm an engineer at heart. Uh, I did engineering, new product development. So I can appreciate some of the struggles that I had as, a, as an engineer and really wanting things to be pretty, pretty perfect and uh, technically based and, um, and moving forward and then having the, the, the marketing side say, well, that's really a different story coming at it from the other place. So I, I think of myself as, as, as being somewhat this, this wow guy, but maybe this is also some of you, right? Some of you are waking up one day like the wow guy and you say, you say, wow, wow. This is the day. Today is the day that I'm gonna start up a startup company. You know, it, it's probably not that tough. I've, I know others have, have, uh, have done this. They've gotten things out of their lab. We, you know, they spent years of research bubbling up some secret sauce, but I know that they've got it out there into the world somehow. And I'm gonna do the same thing. And it's, maybe it's not that hard, you know, but let me get going on it. And today's the day I'm gonna do it. Now, when we, when we think of that, as entrepreneurs, or have those entrepreneurial thoughts, we may or may not be thinking way down the road as, as our real innovation creed. You know, why are we trying to do this? What is important to us to, uh, to commercialize and get this out of the lab? And it might be some very holistic concepts to improve life and that we know we have stuff in the lab that could help people. And yet it's, it's in the lab and it's not really able to help as many people as it could. And maybe wealth generation for ourselves. We, want to, we, we think we can really commercialize this and make some, some money. And we'll talk a little more about the, the value in money in sorting ideas here a little later. But maybe, maybe some of us purposefully or indirectly are thinking that we really want to leave something behind that's, you know, that's bigger than ourselves, that that's really can go on for a long period of time as an innovation engine, an engine that really is able to go on for generation after generation and improve lives in a certain technology space and continue to launch one product after another. And these innovation engines are fantastic at taking in ideas in, in a certain space and figuring out what to do with them and shooting out new products, new product development, new products, and launching one thing after another into the world. And some of them don't, don't come out the other side, but that's all right. These companies that are the best at this, they launch one company, one idea, and when that does what all ideas do and matures and eventually starts to wane and die out, they have, they have another product ready to go. And maybe some things bump along, maybe there's a, a couple of flashes in the pan that don't go anywhere, but overall they are able to sustain generation after generation, help to our societies, employing people, bringing technology forward. And we call these established companies. So that's the established company stage. We have to rewind a little bit. We have to rewind a little bit from there because obviously we're a long ways away from that right at the moment. Right? So let's back up a little bit before that to a very important, a very important stage here that I like to show with this symbol right here. And this is a cash register. So the, the phenomenal thing about this is we, we, we crank the crank, we turn the crank, money pops out because someone has paid us for our idea. Someone has decided that our idea is good enough that they're gonna part with some money. They're gonna part with some cash. And it's 
That is an amazing engine unto itself. If you are able to get someone to actually part with their money because your product is adding them enough value that they actually see this as a win-win, win-win idea, a win-win concept. I am happy to give you money. I'm happy to give you money because you're giving me something that's of value to me. And the cash we're exchanging for the product is even up. We're both winning. It's somewhat of a perpetual motion machine that money comes in and it allows you to keep working and launching on more things and funding yourself forward and funding this great concept forward. And as far down the road as it, as it is shown in the picture, this is a phenomenal, a phenomenal equalizer. It's a phenomenally important piece of the puzzle is actually getting out there so that you are an emerging company. You are starting to handle things on your own with your own cash flow and getting people to, to pay for your pay for your products. That's still a little too far ahead. We're going to have to rewind a little bit more. So we're going to come over in here into the startup stage. Now the startup stage really is looked at in a little more process orientation in general because we now can start to see companies when they're in here. Of course we can see these companies. We can, we can pull into their parking lots and see employees and things. Uh, as we get way over in here, it's hard to see the company yet at this stage. As we go into the startup phase, people start to be counted a little bit, employees and things like that. We can't count them by profits necessarily because they're not making any yet. And the stages are a little more studied, and the stage gate process of bringing things forward is a little more mechanized. But it's not completely agreed upon, of course. And for the, uh, the pharmaceutical type ideas, they're really going to take even longer and more stages of discovery and development and preclinicals, although our preclinical models are going to help over here to advance that faster, um, and phase one, phase two, all that. But let's just talk about three general concepts that occur at major stages that people tend to uh, align with. And th the first one is, is the concept of feasibility, that you, you, have, you have or are figuring out some pretty critical pieces of your formula and the business aspect of that formula, the commercializing aspect of that formula, and you, you're, you're bubbling up a little, a little bit uh, of your, your bubbly secret sauce here as well, and you, you know that it, it can be done on Wednesdays only. For some reason, it never works any other day of the week, and you don't really care because you, you know it at least works. You've proven some, some feasibility on that aspect of it, but you're also starting to think of some other aspects of the system. Possibly this fits into a system or has other pieces that technically need to be worked out. Maybe you have some kind of a micro lab set that you're working on that is going to also be unique or for our diagnostic pieces or something like that. You're, you're trying to figure out how that might work and maybe you're running some, some algorithms even on, on a computer somewhere in, a, in another laboratory or you have some mathematicians working on running some certain things that, that aren't really exactly what you want in the end, but they are proving out some critical pieces. And, and maybe you even have some white papers that you discuss where you just discuss on paper or you're well, you're well supported that some aspects of your idea are not going to be a high risk. So they don't necessarily need to be proven out though, by you. Other people have done that. So the feasibility stage, do the pieces work? And maybe they don't even work together. Maybe you've really never even tried this stuff in here yet because you don't have this quite right. So you're running something else through this or whatever. But you're showing out the key aspects. And it might not work all the time. Very expensive. Maybe it's a lot of, a lot of money. Here, you're talking a lot of money at this stage. Yields are not very good, very poor yields. The percent takes you a long time just to get a little bit of this stuff. That's all right in feasibility. Next stage is a very painful stage for our poor wild guys. For me, as an engineer, I had a, I had a problem with this. I really felt... Uh, uh, a lot of angst in not being able to perfect my products and have my engineers work longer 
because I knew we could improve. I knew we could get better. I knew we could understand better how things worked and all the science behind things, and it was very interesting. You know, maybe we could even invent some more stuff and put on some more benefits, some more bells and whistles that I'm sure the customers want. I was sure, you know, and, and always making this, this better. And from this side, I have the, the business folks and the marketing people and the salespeople. They want something to sell. They're like, give me something to sell. I don't have anything. I can't do anything because you keep trying to perfect it. You keep trying to figure out the science behind it. And so there's a fundamental argument here. There's a fundamental different brains that go on. In general, there's a different brain on this side than on this side and a different personality. And so this, this is a very tricky piece from innovation management in large companies as well as garage startup companies, how to transition across what, what is generally thought of as the, the development phase. Of course, all of this is development, but uh, feasibility and then into development. And, and also, another word that's, that's horrible to, to try to figure out and get correctly here is design freeze, which is what the ice cube is trying to show. Water at zero degrees C, it's, it's, it's frozen. It's trying to freeze. What is good enough? Requirements management. Anyone from a quality background in here? So trying to get the, the quality right. We want to get the quality. Well, that's true, and that's philosophically very easy to agree with. The details are hard. What are real requirements, and what are desirements? And what can come in the second revision? Another word for this is minimum meaningful increments or the minimum viable products. These are all saying the similar things. How can you get some piece out here to the cash register, please, as fast as you can, so you can get some money that's starting to flow in? More importantly, you get customers actually trying things. You get people finding what doesn't work and what works. You have to be very careful. In some cases, we can't just try a bunch of drugs and if we kill some people, oh well, right? Or medical device, well, it only it breaks half the time, you know. So you have to be careful how you do that, but probably